Again, welcome to IT Project Course, ITCO 299 at AIU. Again, in these lectures, we're going to discuss about software project planning. This is our unit one, lecture number two. Again, first we start with who needs software. Uh, as we all know, a software normally perform a specific task. It can be an entertainment or business operation or scientific uh, purposes computing. So in order for software to be developed, a need must be met. We need a software to do something, to do some work, either again, entertainment or business operation, etc. So most software is built in organization for people with specific need. Yeah, we shall go through some few terminology in terms of IT project management. So a stakeholder is anyone who has an interest or a stake in a software being com completed. So a stakeholder can be uh, the sponsor of the project or the user of the project or the project manager or the software developers. So example is a user. A user is someone who would need to use the software to perform a task. Also, soft, so sometimes stakeholders will be users, but often stakeholders will not use the software. A good example would be a senior manager like CEO or CTO in the company will usually have a stake in the software that is, is built since it affects the bottom line even if she or he won't even use it. So example, a CEO may not use the software, but he have a stake on the software since it's again, part of the company or the business operation. Now who builds software? And normally software is typically built by a team of a software engineers, which include a business analysis, system analysis, programmers, developers, and so on. So again, it depends on the type of software that we are embarked on. For example, would be entertainment software such as a game. We may even need audio sound engineers. Uh, we may need graphics, computer graphic engineers, et cetera. So again, a software needs a lot of skills, workers working together in a project. So example here, we have a business analysis or the requirement analysis who talk to the users and stakeholders, also plan the behavior of a software and write the software requirements. So a system analysis or business analysis or requirement analysis uh, would be the person who is going to interview, for example, the users of the software or the stakeholders, basically to get the specifications of the software. Uh, we have functional requirement and non-functional requirement. So a functional requirement will be what tax the software will be doing. Now functional requirement will be the quality or the attribute of the software. For example, we may talk in terms of security of the software, or we may talk about the performance of the software, the speed, et cetera. Also, we may have designers and architects who plan the technical solution and also programmers who write the code. Then we may have the testers who will verify that the software meet its requirements and behave as expected. Next is the project management. The project manager normally plans and also guide the software project. Uh, we may start from managing somewhere from resources, uh, risk involved feasibility studies, uh, managing the staffs involved in the project, etc. So a project manager is responsible for identifying the users and also the stakeholders and determine their needs. A project manager also coordinates the team, ensure that each task has an appropriate software engineer assigned and also that each engineer has a sufficient knowledge to perform it. To do this well, a project manager must be familiar with every aspect of software engineering. Next is identify the needs. Also the project manager drives the scope of the project. 
the scope of the project will be the, the boundary of the project. What specific tax the project will again uh, embark on or the software will be embark on. For example, in project management, we have a term called scope creep. A scope creep is a problem in the sense that, for example, we are going to develop a software and this software will perform 10 tasks. And we know this software is supposed to take only 10 days or let's say six months. Now, if six months reach and we keep adding more features to the software, it means the time may prolong, it may take more time, and also it may involve more finance. So if we start a project, we say, okay, we need only two features in this project, and it should take two months, and it shouldn't cost more than $2,000. Now, as time goes on, if we start adding more features, sometimes it will be unnecessary features, then most likely the cost will be more than 2,000 now, and also it will take more than two months or two weeks, et cetera. And that is the concept of a, of a, a scope creep. So as a project manager, if you have to drive the scope of the project. Also, the project manager should identify and talk to the main stakeholders. The effective way to show st stakeholders that their needs are understood and that those specific needs will be addressed is with a vision and also the scope document. A scope document is very important. Again, the main goal is to avoid the scope creep, adding more features or even sometimes unnecessary features, which will cost more money and also to take more time. So next we talk about the vision and the scope document. So a typical vision and scope document follows an outline, like the following example. So first we may have the program statement. In the program statement, we may have the project background. Then we may again list all the stakeholders, the users, the risk involved, and also some assumptions. So a program statement may go with the project background, stakeholders, users, risk, and assumptions. Now the vision of the, of the solution, here we are going to state our vision statement, also list of features that we need in order to achieve again the vision, also the scope of the phase release. This will be an option. Also features that will not be developed. Project plan defines the work that will be done on the project and what will do it or who will do it. It consists of a statement of work, which is SOW, that will describe all the work products that will be again produced and also a list of people who will perform that work. Also, we may have the resources list that contains a list of all the resources that will be needed for the product and also the availability. Most important is the work breakdown structure and a set of estimates. A work breakdown structure will list all the possible tasks or the work that must be done in order to achieve the goal of the project. Also how long each work will be, uh, will be ended, the duration of each work. Also, we have to list it in a way that the first work that has to be done first will be listed first before the second. So sometimes we may have a, a work one and two. In order to do work two, we are supposed to do work number one. This is something called a critical path. So this means that work one has to be done before work two. Sometimes we may have work two and three. It doesn't matter which one is done first. So in this case, we can do both work in para at the same time. So all this must be stated at the work breakdown structure. Also, we have the project schedule, and also we may have the risk plan that identify any risk that might be encountered and also indicates how those risks will be handled should they occur. And actually our unit three IP assignment at the, at the group project is about risk analysis and how we can mitigate, what strategy we can use to again mitigate the risk. 
Next is the statement of work. Now the statement of work is a detailed description of all of the work products which will be created over the course of the project. This can include the list of features that will be developed, a description of each intermediate derivable or work product that will be built, the estimated effort involved for each work product to be delivered. Then the resources list, is the project plan should contain a list of all resources that will be used on the project. So again, the project plan, we may have all the resources list and also the statement of work. And as we said earlier, a project plan, we have the statement of work, resources list, a work breakdown structure, the project schedule, which will be in form of like a milestones, and also the risk plans. So next is the estimate and project schedule. In the project plan, should also include the estimate and the project schedule. So a work breakdown structure is defined. This will be the list of tasks, which if performed, we generate all of the work products needed to build the software. Also an estimate of the effort required for each task in the work breakdown structure is generated. Also a project schedule is created by assigning resources and determining the calendar time required for each task. And normally with the work breakdown structure, we can even come up with a schedule because in the work breakdown structure, each task will may have a duration how long it will take. And if task one need to be performed first, we have to list that first for let's say five days, then the sixth day, task two, it's only one day to the seventh day, etc. Now, sometimes we may have a, a, a special software that we can use to again create the work breakdown structure. The most common one is the Microsoft Project software. And we can create a work breakdown structure called the Gantt chart, the Gantt chart, G A N N T chart. So, estimate and project schedule will be discussed in detail in the later slides. Also, the project plan, we may go more details in our next lectures. So next is the risk plan, which is part of the project planning document. So a risk plan is a list of all risks that threatens the project, along with a plan to mitigate some or all of those risks. Again, this is our unit three group project for the course. So a project manager select team members to participate in risk planning section. This is the reason why the unit three assignment is a group project. So we have three, four students together. Again, come up with brainstorming. Then it's, and also when we identify the risk, we have to set a priority or a probability that maybe the chance that this risk will occur or maybe, maybe only two, two out of 10 or some risk may be higher than that, and some may be lower. So here we say team member brimstone, the potential risk, the probability, and also the impact of each risk must be estimated. Also a risk plan is constructed. So this is an example of a risk plan. Here we have a risk plan for a project. The project name is called Center Application Project. The assessment team members, uh, Mike, Barbara, Quentin, Jill, Sophia, Dean, and Cooley. Now, these are the risks that they identify. The first race is a senior management will move call center offshore, which will require an internationalization features to be built. So they say the probability of this is three, the impact is five, and priority is 15. Now, the numbers that are set for probability, the impact and priority, this is a very special uh, scaling system that we have to generate based on the projects and features, and characteristics, et cetera. So what action must be taken? This is the mitigation. Mike will add a requirement tax to the schedule for Quentin to begin investigating internationalization requirement because the risk here is that if, the management moved the call center to offshore, then we have to have internationalization features. 
Another example, Jane will be pulled off of this project for royalty archive project bug fixes. So the probability is four, the impact is three, the priority is 12, 12. So what will be the answer? So we are going to assign Kule to work with Jill on the initial programming task to make sure he's cross-trained. So we're going to train another staff with the help of Jill before again, he pull off from the project. So these are some few examples of a risk planning as a concept. So again, this is the conclusion of our lectures and thank you.